We greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Just wait a bit and say, I'm glad to be here. Amen. Praise His name. Let's just stand together. We're going to just open with a song.
of the dead. All the songs that we sing as a praise unto you, be acceptable in the throne of grace. And we thank you for it. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just stand together.
that we can look up to and follow their leadership because they are following in your footsteps. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, prepare our hearts for the marriage of the Lamb. We pray for this while in this instant too, Lord. I pray for a mighty revelation of your, of your glory, of, of who you are, Jesus, as the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we also pray for the, for the uh, Arabic people, the Palestinians, Lord, who are so full of hatred that you will visit Israel in its, in its wholeness, Lord, to reveal your love and your peace to each and every one living there. Thank you, Lord. There, must, there are people who must be and come to salvation, and we pray for them, Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Praise the Lord. This morning I want to speak to you about the importance of God's Word in your life. Now, just a short testimony. I accepted Jesus as personal Savior in September 66. And I was baptized in water on the 2nd of October 66. So you can now realize that for 55 years that I'm walking with the Lord. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit speaking with tongues at Pilsner Park on the 30th of December 66. And I was called to ministry by Jesus early in 67. You see, he really worked very fast for me. And uh, at a youth conference at September 69, also at Queen's and Brooks and Park, the Lord uh, gave me a last clear calling. Are you willing to leave everything and to commit yourself for me, to me, to serve as a minister, as I will, I will guide you? So, uh, at, at that stage, I, you know, I said yes, but then Betsy asked me, won't you marry me please? Because I don't want you to be to your own outcome. <laughs> that goes. <laughs> but, but in any case, with all this, we got married the 3rd of January in 1970. And just after that, we left for Joburg to enter into full-time ministry. So you realize that for the past 55 years, and I give God all the glory. This was my faithful and very close companion through all the years. What I know about ministry, what I know about God, and to know Him, who He is, His character, how He loves me, how He wants me to serve Him, the Holy Spirit reveals to me through the Bible. And I'm so, I'm so grateful and thankful for the Holy Spirit. And I'm so thankful for the Bible that I can have in my hands. You know, there was an advertisement years ago about the yellow pages. And to think of the walking through the yellow pages. So I was seeing this song or, or this advertisement. Then you think of the walking through the holy Bible. <laughs> and if you learn to use the Bible, you can, you can face this world and know that the Bible is God's Word. Amen. Faithful, truthful, and powerful. Hallelujah. So, the importance of God's Word in our life cannot be overemphasized. And I just want to read this scripture to you, which the Lord Himself spoke to the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 55, from verse 8, where the Lord says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bear and sprout, and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Listen to verse 11. 
so will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me useless without a result, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the manner for which I send it. And therefore, we can never underestimate the value, the power, uh, the importance of God's Word in our lives. I want to say to you this morning, young ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you this morning, the Word of God, the Word of God is much more than your Bible lying next to your bed. God said, I sent my word. This word was written by spirit-filled servants of God under the anointing power of the Holy Spirit as they received God's word. The Bible, actually what we have, for me, came to be like this, is the script of an ongoing reality story of a mighty God who is at work in this world and in the lives of people. Amen. It's like a reality, it's like reality TV you watch every week. Every week. The Bible is a reality, the script of that ongoing reality story of God working at work in our lives. In world situations, God is at work. And through the Word of God, there is an ongoing activity of God's power, of God's faithfulness, of God's goodness towards us, driven by the Holy Spirit. This is the powerful Word of God that we experience in our lives. This is the powerful Word of God that I have experienced through all years of ministry. God has committed Himself to honor His Word. And we must realize it. When we read this Bible, we must know that God has committed Himself to honor His Word by stating in uh, Psalm 138, where the Word of God says, Psalm 138, verse 2. For you have magnified your word together with your name. But another translation reads, For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. God's word is precious to Him. And God is watching faithfully over His word to fulfill everything that He has spoken in His Word. Hallelujah. That is why God said to Jeremiah when He called Him, He said to Jeremiah, I vow to you to actively watch over my Word to fulfill it. Although you are young, although you say you cannot speak, I, the living God, will fulfill my Word as I speak my word into your spirit as I speak my word into your mouth to speak to the people. I bow to you. I will watch over my word to fulfill every word that I have spoken. Therefore I must emphasize to you this morning the importance of God's word in your life. But I must also urge you to take heed of God's word. We sometimes just read God's Word just to uh, soothe our conscience, isn't it? I can't go to sleep before I quickly read Psalm 23. It's the easiest thing. No! God's Word is more than Psalm 23. God's Word is the living Word that wants to transform you, that wants to equip you, that wants to empower you. And therefore I urge you to take heed to God's spoken word in your life. Why? Because the Bible is more than just letters on paper. 
earth. The Bible contains the complete will of God for us. How to live for the pleasure and glory of God. In, the, in, in, in Revelation 4.11 it says that all things that God has created, including us, He created for His pleasure. He wants to take delight in us. He wants to smile over us. He wants to proudly say, I'm so proud of my son and my daughter. Amen. And therefore, we must remember the words that uh, the writer of Hebrews wrote in Hebrews 4, verse 12, when he wrote about the word. He wrote this following saying that the Word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit, that is the completeness of a person and of both joints and marrow the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. It is like uh, James wrote when he says, when we read the Bible, it is like looking in a mirror. And God is speaking to us. As we read the Bible, it is like God is showing who what, what, we are, what, what we look like in His eyes. He revealed to us our shortcomings. He reveals to us our sinful habits and nature. He reveals to us what He intends us to be. Therefore, we must take heed of the Word that God speaks to us because the Word is alive and the Word is coming alive through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is therefore the utmost important to take heed to God's word, whether through the Bible and through the Bible it's a most common way that God speaks to us. But there's also instances of God's giving us, giving us a vision or a dream or a divine revelation. In whatever way God speaks to us, we better take notice and we better decide to choose. We want to obey what God is speaking to us. I can remember so many instances in, in, in the ministry in, in assemblies, coming across difficult situations, waiting on the Lord, and the word comes came to me, and the word that God revealed to me how to handle this, what is the way forward, and obeying His word. I have experienced every time. That God knows what He is doing. And obeying the word brings the results of, 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 of uh, uh, victory and, and the, uh, solving of problems. God's word cannot lie because God cannot lie. And His word is so wonderful, so powerful, so comforting. It brings enlightenment in my, in, in, in my thoughts and, and, and it brings understanding of what God wants to tell me. Therefore, we must take heed of God's word. Listen to just to this few scriptures. In a, Isaiah 4, verse 6, the Lord says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of my word, my law, where I reveal my will. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I think you will agree with me if we don't know the will of God, we find it difficult to understand why does things happen the way it happens. We find it difficult to get direction in our lives. And we find so many people submitting their lives to, to Jesus, but after a short while, they just disappear. We can never underestimate the importance of God's word in our lives. Never, never, never. That is why God has given his word to us. 
It is manual for us to know how to live, to know how to overcome. That is why Hosea says, people will perish because of the ignorance and lacking God's word in their lives. Jesus himself said something very interesting when he says in, in, in John 12, and just listen to his words when he speaks in John 12, verse 47 to 50. He says, if anyone hears my words and does not keep them, Jesus said, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge and condemn the world. Judgment of the world is not the reason why I came. But I came to save the world. I came to reveal to the world this wonderful love and grace of God to the world. Listen to verse 48. But whoever rejects me and refuses to accept my teachings as one who judges him, the very word that I spoke will judge and condemn him on the last day. In other words, the day of the great judgment seat of God. You see, Jesus also said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Because the, the word of God is everlasting. John 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He will not pass away. The word that comes to you will not pass away. And if you choose to be disobedient and to disregard the word of God, there will be a price to pay one day. Because Jesus said, I did not come to judge you, but the very word that I spoke, he will judge you. That will judge you and condemn you on the last day. So it's very important to take heed to what the Word of God says. For what reason did God send His Word to us then? That we must take care to listen to it, to read it, to understand it. When we read in 2 Timothy, we read this word in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. Listen here, all Scripture, all scripture. Many people say, I don't read the Old Testament. That is for the Jewish people. How do you read the New Testament? Old Testament is the foundation of the New Testament. You can't separate the Word of God. You must see the Word of God in its, in the, uh, 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 in its fullness. And that's why the Word of God says, all scriptures is God read given by divine inspiration and it is profitable for instruction God wants to instruct me how to learn what to do He wants to give me direction for conviction of sin that is why I've experienced it so many times while the word goes out I could see the expression on faces as the word and the spirit convicts people of sin. I can recall so many people where, where hard-hearted men were broken by the spirit. They came running to the front, fell on their faces, cried to God for mercy, for salvation. That is the word, the powerful word. The word is for correction of error and restoration to obedience. For training in righteousness, that is learning to live in, conform, in, in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage, so that the man of God may be complete and provisioned, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Can you understand the importance of God's work in your life? Can you understand that you will make time for God's word? Can you understand that there must be in your daytime a time where you choose to come alone with God's word and allow the Holy Spirit to make God's word alive in your spirit so that you can be educated and 
and, 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 and that he can teach you regarding the way that you must live and go. This is so important, but this is also important to experience the reality of the living word in your life. I say again, to experience the reality of the living word of God in your life. In other words, not just read the word and put it away and go to sleep, but to see how the word that you accept as a word from God becomes a reality. You see the outcome of God's word in the physical reality. You know that God is at work to experience that reality. I found out I must be filled with and walk in the Spirit. That is very important. What Corinthians 2 says that you cannot understand God's way of doing things. You cannot understand God's word except by the Holy Spirit. For the world, the Bible is a foolish book. You can only under experience and understand the power, the reality of the word through the Holy Spirit. The Holy, the Word and the Holy Spirit, listen, the Word and the Holy Spirit always work in unison with each other. And through the Holy Spirit, the truth and the power of the Word is being revealed. It is only the Holy Spirit that will enable you to understand clearly what God is trying to tell you. You will only be able to know the, the way, the will of God through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Another thing to understand and remember this morning is that God never works outside of His Word. His promises, His instructions, His miracles, His dealings with us in our daily living is always according to His Word. Hallelujah! That is why it was such a wonderful experience for all the years to take God on His Word. Whenever I accept it according to another assembly, I know that God has spoken into my heart. I receive that revelation that God wants me to go to that assembly. But I always ask the Lord, confirm my mandate through your word. And every time God did it, I went to difficult assemblies. And all I had to fall back on was the word of God where God confirmed it and said, this is my word, you can go. It is so important, family of church on the rise, to understand the, uh, the importance of God's word in your life. God is working always according to His word. When every time I pray for the sick, I, I know what the Word of God says. I am the Lord that healed me. Through my stripes you are healed. And as I said in the earlier service, when praying for the sick, I know exactly what God through His Word and through His Spirit is telling me to focus on the root of the problem, on the root of the, 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 the sickness or ailment or whatever, the infirmity, and to address that. And God is faithful because He is working according to His Word. And therefore, it is so important to have the Word of God in your heart. I once, I, I, once again, I want to say, not the Bible on your bedside. David says in Psalm 119 verse 11, Lord, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. In your heart, the word of God must be. Therefore, Colossians 3.16 urges this, the church that they must be filled with the word in order that they might know how to comfort each other, how to uh, to motivate each other. How to sing praises with psalms and a new 
songs because the word of God in your life enables you to do it. The Holy Spirit and the word and, and the word works in unison. And listen, if you haven't got the word in your heart, the Holy Spirit actually has got nothing to work with. Isn't that so? The seed of the word in your heart enables the Holy Spirit to turn out that specific word for your specific situation, to make it alive, to anoint it. So when you begin to proclaim that word in your situation, to proclaim your word over a, 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 a person or what, then the Holy Spirit takes that word and it becomes the powerful word of God. And if that word isn't in your heart, if that word isn't part of, of your daily living, the, the Holy Spirit has got nothing to work with. As I said earlier, we had an encounter with a young lady, a uh, demon possessed here, Father Brad and me, two weeks ago. But it was only through the word that we could address that demon. You remember Jesus after being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Luke 4 verse, verse 1 and 2 says that filled with the Holy Spirit, he was driven by the Holy Spirit into desert to, uh, to be tempted by the devil. And you know, the devil knows the word. He knows the word. And he put the word to, to Jesus. But the word Jesus gave him was a powerful and a living word. The word saturated by the presence of God. And Jesus answered the devil through the word. Answered the devil through the word. I can remember encountering many situations where I was ministering deliverance that Ministering the word, speaking the word, the word becomes a burning fire. And I can remember, I can recall so many instances where I send the word and the Holy Spirit makes that word like a, like a fire <coughs> in that person. I, I could see how the demons cringe. And, and, and remember the, the word says also in, 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 in uh, Jeremiah, it is also like a hammer. Like a, the word is like a heaven. And when preaching the word, and the sinner sits there under the conviction, the word comes in like a heaven. It breaks that hard wall. It breaks that hard wall. And you come to the realization of I need Jesus. And that's why so many occasions people just broke down in tears, crying to God for salvation. Oh, the word of God in your 